Now it's time to get down to this app's bread and butter, tracking calories. And sorry, I won't mention butter again. When you first open MyFitnessPal, you're dropped at the home screen. Scrolling down, you can view their feed, pun intended, which ranges from boring blog posts to annoying ads to actually some pretty decent recipes. Along the bottom of the screen, you'll see a shortcut bar. In that shortcut bar, you will find links to the homepage, a diary, and a me or profile tab. It's in the profile tab that you can adjust your fitness goals, your macros, nutritional targets, change app settings, and see your weight loss progress. But it's within the diary that you'll spend 90% of your time, for it's the diary that we use to track calories. The diary is broken down into four meal categories alongside a rather inconsequential exercise category. This exercise category isn't something I recommend you use. What it does is it counts the calories you've burned through the exercises you track and then adds that back to your total calories, ensuring that you're eating enough to get through your workout while still hitting your weight loss goal. This is great in theory, but the problem is that not everyone is going to burn the same amount of calories doing the same exercise. A 300 pound 25 year old man will probably burn a slightly different number than a 150 pound 55 year old woman, even if they're both doing a half hour of cardio on the treadmill. So if the app is adding inaccurate calories back to your total, well, you can see how that might mess up your diet. If you're wanting to track your workouts, find a dedicated app and be sure to monitor your heart rate. Otherwise, just consider anything burnt off during that workout extra icing on a weight loss cake. But back to tracking. First scroll to the meal category you want to enter and press add food. Select the search bar and begin typing in whatever it is that you're about to violently consume. A list will be populated of thousands of items. MyFitnessPal has an absolutely massive database of nutritional information. As you might imagine though, they all vary slightly by brand or item. You have the choice of simply narrowing your search results by refining keywords and scrolling until you find the right item. Or you can use the handy dandy barcode scanner. The barcode scanner is found in the upper corner here, unironically represented by a barcode. Simply press the button and your camera will open up, ready to read any barcode that may cross its path. Grab your food item of choice, struggle to find the barcode, line it up, and boom, you're now seeing the nutritional information for that particular item as you would on the back of the package. But as anyone who's ever eaten a bag of chips knows, serving sizes can be totally bogus. Luckily, we can adjust these portions from this very screen. Change the units, change the number of servings, and it's all automatically updated. You can scroll down to see the new macros for your updated serving and the more detailed nutritional information. Mash the check mark button in this top corner to confirm the food is ready and it's added to our meal. But we're not satisfied just yet so I'm going to throw a few more things in here. Once again we find the correct meal category and repeat the entry process. Manual search or scan the barcode. Adjust the portions. Add the item. As most of you know, I'm a sophisticated man with a sophisticated palate, so I'm not about to drink my shake with water. One last time, we're going to search, adjust, and add. Voila, we've just added our first meal. To speed up this whole process, you can save frequently used meals for future use. Tap these three dots here to access more settings and just select save meal. You can name it, adjust details, even add a picture. Now to add our saved food, we simply go to add a new food item as we usually would, but this time we choose the meal tab here along the top. We then select the saved food. Now as you may have noticed, it can be a little tedious adding new items, one at a time, as we did with the shake. So before wrapping up the video, I'm going to give you one last little time saving tidbit. When you go to add a new food, you'll see in the top corner an option to multi-add. By selecting this, you can then choose multiple items without ever having to leave the screen. This even includes when you're searching for things manually. Rather than me trying to explain, let me show you. We're going to add some bacon and eggs under my breakfast. My morning just got delicious. We enter breakfast, and then this time we toggle on multi-add. 
Now we're going to search for eggs, adjust our portions, and confirm. Let's clear this and enter bacon. Adjust. Confirm. Clear. Maybe toast. Adjust. Confirm. It shows how many items are selected in the upper left corner. And when we're done, we add those with the same check mark found in the upper right corner. And there you have it. Easiest pie. It's all right. No pie. We've added some meals for the day and we can now see our remaining calories in this bar along the top. In the next video, I'm going to go through some of the additional settings in the app that we can use to really help optimize our gains and make things even easier.